you guys, it's Kayla and Jim, and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we are going to do our first case study on hurricanes, hurricanes. specifically Hurricane Rita of 2005. Why did we choose Rita? Well, you see, Rita's kind of an interesting case because it happens right after another hurricane which you may or may not know the name of, Hurricane Katrina. It went to a similar area in the Gulf of Mexico. It also impacted Louisiana. So, there's uh, some interesting dynamics that go on with this hurricane and I think it would be an interesting case study. And we also got a comment from one of you guys saying that it would be an interesting case study. So here we are! That's right, and it did have a lot of impacts too. Especially, I think it was about three weeks after Katrina, so everyone was already on heightened alert, especially in that area, trying to recover, what are they going to do with their lives, and now here we got another hurricane barreling down. It was just incredible to see those events unfolding in such a short time period, almost in the same region. It was interesting that, you know, it is kind of a forgotten hurricane to is. a lot of people, except those that were impacted, obviously, because Katrina really was was the hurricane that took the most attention and obviously a lot more deaths a lot costlier you know uh, understandably so but rita was nothing to sweep under the rug and said nothing to see here there's a lot to see here with rita so we decided let's uh let's go ahead and do this study all right so we've compiled a list of bullet points that we were able to gather from hurricane rita the study we found was from the lake charles louisiana national weather service office and uh, they had some very interesting statistics on Hurricane Rita. Uh, so it formed on September 18, 2005, west of the southeastern Bahamas. And after that, it went ahead and became a hurricane on September 20th, passing between the Florida Keys and Cuba. Making its way into the Gulf? That's right. As it progressed into the Gulf of Mexico, Rita rapidly intensified over very warm waters, and it actually had very weak vertical wind shear. So a perfect environment for a hurricane to strengthen and intensify rapidly. Yep, so that means that there's no winds that will tear the hurricane apart. It had a perfect playing ground to just gain strength. That's right. So Rita actually reached a peak intensity of a Cat 5 with sustained winds of 155 knots, which equates to 180 miles per hour, and a minimum central pressure of 895 millibars, which is about 26.43 inches of mercury. And that occurred at 10 p.m. Central Time on September 21st. And that I do believe would make Hurricane Rita the strongest hurricane to ever be in the Gulf of Mexico. That's right. And one of the strongest Atlantic hurricanes on record of all time. That's, That's right. like a crazy strong hurricane. That's right. Yep, it was exactly what you said. The strongest in the Gulf and it actually they actually point out the fourth strongest in the Atlantic basin. So there were only three that were ever stronger. Mm -hmm. And Katrina was not one of them. So what do you think about that? So we have this storm that formed over the Southwest Bahamas, basically, which is relatively close to the U.S. mainland. Yeah. And then in a short period of time, it goes, ahead, I think about 36 hours, forms to a hurricane between the Keys and Cuba. A major hurricane. A major hurricane into the Gulf of Mexico, you know, within 24 hours of that, 24 to 36 hours of that. You know, within a matter of uh, four or five days, you went from nothing to a Cat 5 hurricane from the southeastern Bahamas over yeah. into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> Incredible. insane. And normally when you have hurricanes, they'll start forming, like they'll, they'll start giving signs that they're gonna form off the coast of Africa. And you've got a good like week-ish amount of time. Uh, sometimes they're, they're closer to the mainland, but for a hurricane to form over the islands there, kind of make its way right into the Gulf and then blow up into this Cat 5. A few weeks after the biggest, most like costliest and deadliest hurricane in US history, that, that uh, it, crazy, crazy and kind of coincidental that you have these two back-to-back -back Cat 5 hurricanes. That's right. And I believe the Katrina track was further north, yeah. but still had enough influence out in the Gulf that it would have churned up enough waters, would have cooled things down. But with it being August and, and then September, the sun angle is still up high enough that water's warmed up. You've got the Gulf Loop current, and so you got advection of warm waters occurring. So any water that was churned up and cooled down could 
quickly heat back up again. And being, you know, a little different latitude and longitude for this path of Rita, explosive development occurred again, especially with the upper levels being favorable for it to vent properly and it just blew up yeah. really fast. So uh, incredible. So there you have the winds, they're, they're cranking around, they're approaching southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana at this point. And now, of course, with any hurricane, you have storm surge. And so with a Cat 5, you know, that's churned up the gulf, basically. Obviously, as it got closer to the U.S., it weakened. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It weakened down to a Cat 3, but even so, I mean, by this point, everything is churning. You know, yeah. the ocean has swelled up, and winds are pushing these waves and, and swells toward the coastline. So um, they reported storm surge values of 12 to 18 feet feet in most of Cameron Parish, Louisiana. And Cameron Parish is not that far above sea level. <laughs> that whole area is not. Most of the coastline of Louisiana is not very far <laughs> above sea level, as we have just seen with Hurricane Ida. That's right. And it was 10 to 12 feet storm surge values across most of Vermilion Parish. So we're talking, you know, uh, just this wall of water just starting to pile up and, and overtake these coastal areas and houses getting flooded and, and roads are impassable all the way in for quite a ways. So yeah. it's yeah. incredible. Um, specifically, Holly Beach in Louisiana was completely leveled to the ground. And there's pictures of Holly Beach before and after shots. And I'm always very interested in seeing those kind of videos. It's so interesting and pictures. to see those comparisons, yeah. That's right. You know, so you see what happened literally days beforehand, and then you look at it afterwards, and you just, it gives you kind of the scope of the destruction, but again, you're kind of at the, you know, yeah. 50,000 foot view <laughs> looking down at it. You're not down like, on the wow. ground unless you're seeing videos that somebody actually took and posted. Right. But even so, the scope of it is just incredible. It's unbelievable. And I'm kind of like looking around the room right now and seeing like the, the height of the ceiling is only what nine nine ish feet kind of uh, imagining storm surge twice that height it, I, I can't even and then you see the aerial views of places like holly beach where the, there's land and then all of a sudden there's not land and it's just one of those crazy things that uh, you can't put it into words. Now some other interesting things that the Lake Charles National Weather Service put out. The Eye of Rita passed over the Southeast Texas Regional Airport south of Beaumont, Texas, producing a record lowest pressure reading of 952.3 millibars at 3.09 in the morning, September 24th. And then there was also an unofficial report of 948.9 millibars uh, recorded by the vessel Cape Vincent docked at the port of Beaumont at 3.30 a.m. that same morning. So, incredible. So obviously by that time, it reached a record low 895, and then by the time it made landfall, it was up into the 948 to 952 range. Yeah. So it weakened down to a Cat 3, but still. But still, that for kind a of Cat pressure. 3, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and for comparison, uh, a nice regular fair weather day would be 1,013 millibars, or about... 29.92 uh, inches of mercury. There you go. And then, uh, so we're talking incredibly low pressure. Very, very low. A couple of other bullet points here. So the wind damage was extensive across southwest Louisiana and southeast Texas, with a large area receiving Cat 1 and Cat 2 hurricane force winds. The exact measurements were not possible in some areas due to power outages, failures of automated weather observing sites, and the coastal tide gauges being washed away by the storm surge. So that's a big thing that happens with hurricanes this strong is that sometimes we don't get accurate measurements because the storm itself has taken out all the instruments. <laughs> that's right. So in some cases it's just left for like extrapolation and guessing and, and, and damage path kind of like uh, with a tornado how you kind of observe it afterwards. But yeah, I mean these are some crazy values that unofficially happened and then the official ones as well. That's right. So with all that said, Obviously the hurricane has come in, it's done its damage, it's weakening over land and moving away. So at the end of it all, they recorded that Rita was the strongest hurricane to strike southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana since Hurricane Audrey on June 27, 1957. Many a moon before. That's right. Hurricane Rita caused seven U.S. deaths uh, direct 
fatality direct there. Deaths, yeah. um, and over a hundred indirect fatalities uh, were associated with the evacuation efforts, uh, aftermath of Hurricane Rita, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the United yeah. States. So, although the loss of life was tragic, it doesn't compare to Hurricane Audrey, who had hundreds of lives Ooh. lost. That just goes to show the uh, development in technology, advanced warnings, improvement in the warning systems, um, and, and you know everything worked together to help reduce all those lives being lost. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, and you often get Rita being compared to Katrina, but you often don't get it compared to Hurricane Audrey, which it's much more closer to. When you look at the path and the intensity and the type of storm and the amount of deaths and the, the flooding that it caused and everything. So yeah, there's a quite a few similarities between Rita and Audrey compared to Rita and Katrina. That's right. And we have actually a couple of images that we're going to go ahead and pop up right now so that you can see the comparison between Rita and Audrey. Yeah. All right, as mentioned before, Rita was a Cat 5 and it dropped down to a Cat 3 before making official landfall. This was due to there were cooler waters near the coast, which uh, when you have cooler ocean temperatures, there's not enough energy for the hurricane to keep doing what it's doing, so it starts weakening gradually. There was also an element of shear that led to Rita's weakening, and what does shear do to hurricanes? That's right. So the shear that was occurring on the west and southwest side of the hurricane actually started disrupting the flow around the hurricane. A hurricane likes to have its nice little bubble to form in. Well, this shear was actually impacting that side, and so the flow was getting disrupted, and it caused it to weaken a little bit. It wasn't yeah. an abundance of shear, but it was enough to Just actually disrupt enough. it and, and keep the intensity down or lower the intensity or keep it stable where it was at uh, and not intensify further. Yep, and then there was another thing that was a major player in the de-intensifying of Rita, which is something that we call the eye wall replacement cycle. And can you explain what that is? <sighs> <laughs> So basically, naturally during a hurricane's life cycle, it'll start doing these eye wall replacements. So that inner ring of the eye, it'll get disorganized and kind of like fall apart, but then it'll form like a stronger one and then it'll fall apart. So during this like falling apart section, the hurricane loses strength. And then if it's over warm ocean temperatures and there's not a lot of wind shear at the higher levels, it could re-intensify after that, but at this point Rita was pretty close to the coast, so as it was kind of de-intensifying going through the cycle, it just never reformed into a Cat 5 again, and it just kind of stayed at that Cat 3 level. That's right, and it's really uh, something that's observed with strong hurricanes, yep. major hurricanes. We yep. see a lot of these, they will intensify rapidly, and they'll go for a period of time, especially when the environment is very favorable. And then after a certain amount of time, it's just so strong that uh, it does an yeah. eye, replace, <laughs> eye wall replacement cycle to kind of reorganize itself and then uh, so it creates another eye wall and so you have an inner one, you have an outer one and, and there's some dynamics that are going on there. <laughs> Try not to get too technical about it but... Basically hurricanes you know, they, as they're intensifying, they drink lots of cups of coffee, and then eventually they get completely burned out and they have to take a nap. That's the eye wall replacement cycle. And then they start drinking coffee again. Well, Rita never got to drink in the next set of coffee. Kind of like Kayla when she's editing all the videos. Exactly. <laughs> eye wall replacement cycle of editing. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and put up right now some images and some videos that we found on Hurricane Rita so that you can get more of an understanding what happened for those that haven't witnessed it. Here we go. Here we go. This is what Cameron Parish looked like from the air 10 years ago. It was just days after Hurricane Rita made landfall that farm journalist AJ Sabine shot this video. The water you see here covered pastures where cattle would graze on the ground the landscape littered with their carcasses. Hurricane Rita proved that a lot can change overnight. The result was a terrible traffic jam. There were reports of people traveling 13 miles and it took 15 hours to do that. So predictably, people ran out of gas. And when they ran out of gas, they had no air conditioning. And then suddenly in 100 degree heat, you got heat exhaustion as a problem. And in the end of the 120 people that were killed by Rita, 100 of them were killed by the evacuation, unfortunately.
So there you have it, a case study of Hurricane Rita from 2005. And we're gonna have a couple of other ones that we're gonna do too in the works, so. Yep, we got a bunch of them written down. If you guys have more suggestions for hurricane specific case studies, leave them below. If you want to follow more of our social media, we have Facebook and Instagram, it'll pop up here. We post a bunch of our weather adventures there and all of our updates. And as always, if you like what you see, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Our website, as we mentioned in last week's video, is now officially updated and live. Go check that out, linked below as well. And tonight also ends our giveaway for hitting 2,500 subscribers. So you have until midnight tonight. If you haven't already, definitely check out last week's video and jump on that in the comment section over there. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may you stay strong through all your eye wall replacement cycles. Wait, not at, I'm not explaining this well <laughs> enough at all. <laughs>